I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is real estate consultant Ross Kay from the WealthyHomeowner.ca. Welcome back to the show, Ross. Uh, thanks a lot, Jim. And uh, before we go on today, uh, I want to let you know that uh, I've been interviewed a few times here the last while, and... The way you've conducted yourself in these interviews, the professionalism that, that you put off um, or have put towards me uh, since I started here on House Street, uh, I really appreciate it because I don't see that everywhere that uh, that I've been. So I wanted to thank you for that. Well, Ross, uh, I appreciate the fact you give us real numbers and not propaganda. <laughs> on to today's show, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, I'm just asking now about uh, the Toronto real estate market. Still booming, is it? Uh, the Toronto real estate market, it, it's booming in the sense that consumers in the GTA are being misled in the same way that uh, home buyers in British Columbia had been misled for the last two years. What I mean by that is that arbitrary data points or, or which the real estate boards call statistics, they're, they're being held out universally to the Canadian public as fact. This is sort of a like a little bit what's going on in the United States right now with this alternative facts, fake news, lies, and everything else that's going on with the, uh, the new president in the United States, former realtor uh, Donald Trump. Um, I say that for on purpose because this, Statistics that the boards release, which the boards and associations clearly say are statistics. They don't say that they're data. It says it in their spreadsheet. They have reached a point of just phenomenal misstatement. Those misstatements take place in the greater Toronto area as easily as they do with Vancouver. In Toronto this week, or excuse me, last week, we're, we're, uh, we're uh, recording this here on Monday. Um, Last week, the Toronto Real Estate Board came out with their 2017 forecast and their 2016 year review report. It wasn't as political uh, a report as they released last year, where they had somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 politicians give a written endorsement of the value of the Toronto Real Estate Board. A crazy report if you can get your hands on a copy that they released last year. And the politicians are not in it this year at all. So that was done for a reason, um, which we're not we're, we're not going to waste time discussing here today. Um, but in that report, they stated that 50% of the buyers in the GTA last year, there was 113,000 sales by TREV members. For the sake of the argument, we're going to use 100,000 to make this uh, a black and white uh, issue for your listeners. The Toronto Real Estate Board said 50% of the sales that took place in the GTA by their members, went to first-time buyers. 50% of the sales. Um, that was really quite a strong statement, although apparently people don't realize how strong it was, because that number was picked up by Canadian media, coast to coast, all the major news outlets, Canadian press, everyone. It went as far as having the president of Central Mortgage and Housing Corpor Corporation, Evan Siddell, retweet the report as a credible instrument to look at for housing data. So for your listeners today, this will be my final reference probably ever needed to explain the ignorance that exists on a housing market. And by the time I'm done this little story, all of your listeners are going to be shaking their heads. No, that's, that's obvious. What, what are you talking about? So here's the story. The Toronto Real Estate Board said 50% of their sales last year went to first-time buyers. 50,000 of the 100 sales, 
and they, again, they did 113. 50,000 of 100,000 sales went to first-time buyers. That means 50,000 first-time buyers went out and bought a brand new home from a member of the Toronto Real Estate Board. Now, if those people bought a home from an existing homeowner who, who owned their home, how many homeless families were in the GTA when those first-time buyers all bought their homes, Jim? None of them. None of them. None of them were homeless. Why were they not homeless? Because they went and bought another place. They went and bought another place. You are 100% right. So we have 50,000 first-time buyers bought their first-time homes, which we know are the lowest-priced homes in the neighborhood, in the uh, GTA, by the way, because that's all the first-time buyers qualify to buy. Then we know that 50,000 former homeowners had so, who they had so, purchased their homes from needed to go out and buy another house for their family. In other words, they were trade-up buyers. This report admitted the second group of buyers they were that their members dealt with last year were trade-up buyers who were, generally speaking, buying their second house. Okay, now if those 50,000 people go and buy 50,000 homes, what happens to the former owners of the 50,000 homes that they bought? Because the Toronto Real Estate Board said there was only 100,000 homes sold. 50,000 went to the first-time buyers. 50,000 went to the, the homes that those former owners bought, and now we're sitting there with 50,000 families in the GTA homeless. Now, we know there are no news reports about families living in cardboard boxes who used to live in uh, $1.2 million homes in the GTA. There were no stories about that, because the stories would have to have been 50,000 of them. So the only answer to the Toronto Real Estate Board's report statistics, would be that aliens hovered over the GTA in their spaceships. They um, abducted 50,000 families, former homeowners, from the GTA, and they transported them somewhere else, somewhere off the planet, because they are no longer here, because they didn't buy another house, because only 100,000 homes sold. So what were the real sales figures? Okay, so the hardest thing, all the economists that you hear, including CMHC, Evan Siddell retweeted this report as a credible tool. CMHC uses the Toronto Real Estate Board statistics in every single report it, re it uh, produces for the public, and for the government, and for the Minister of Finance, and for the Bank of Canada. CMHC uses TREB data in every single one of those reports. They listen and believe what Treb tells them. They don't know how to calculate first-time buyers. So instead, they had a survey commission. And from the survey, they extrapolated out this number of 50%, which every news media outlet in, in Canada told Canadians was the truth, which CMHC, Government of Canada, Minister of Finance, Bank of Canada, everybody else, Statistics Canada, everybody will believe. We know how to count first-time buyers. Now, the average selling price in Toronto lot in the GTA last year went up 17%. That's how much it went up, 17%. That is impossible when first-time buyers equal 50% of your market because those first-time buyers are buying the lowest-priced homes. We'll get, to, we'll get to more proof of this in a second. We talk about Vancouver in January. Um, that it is an impossibility. If 50% of your buyers were first-time buyers, your average selling price would have decreased in the neighborhood of about 30% in the GTA last year. Instead, it, it increased 17.6%. The actual number of first-time buyers is somewhere in the neighborhood of 17%. Now, I know the exact number, but I'm not going to quote the exact number because that's part of our propri proprietary uh, metrics. That's how we know what's going on in a housing market. It's how we know what the housing prices are going to move up or down. 
It, it uh, allows us to know when the market is going to turn, and it allows us to know very, a lot of variables in the market, including mortgage debt to be assumed, the amount of uh, debt that Canada as a nation is going to absorb. We know all those numbers in advance because we know how, us, how the market is broken down. The fact is, in the GTA, it was around 17%. Now, all of a sudden, that makes common sense. Ah, okay, if 17% of the buyers were first-time buyers, that would mean the average selling price would probably go up by a lot. In other words, 17%. Now, there's not a direct correlation between those two numbers. This is simply a mere coincidence that we measured it at a time at the end of the year where it was up 17%. At buyer count, 17% were first-time buyers. Now, let's use that story. 17% were first-time buyers. They went out and bought their first-time home. The owners of those homes went out and bought their next home. The owners of those homes went out and bought their next home. Oh, all of a sudden we're at 17 times 3. Now we're up to, what's that, uh, 51, 51%. So now we still have room for those buyers, those owners, going out and buying another home. And the buyers of the homes they bought going out and buying another home. So there's enough room in the marketplace for it to be a practical reality that by the time it's all done, the, the one or 2,000 uh, sales that the, the uh, sales chain would be missing, by the time that first 17% of home buyers, the ripple effect of them entering the market finally uh, ended out, uh, buying homes that maybe people had passed away, they've moved to uh, an old age home, uh, they've moved the kids in with them, the kids in financial situations, so the kids sell their house, they move them in with their parents, all those sort of things. There's enough flexibility in your story when you're starting out with 17% first-time buyers. When you make the statement that 50% of the buyers were first-time buyers, there is no flexibility because 50 plus 50 equals 100. There has never been a housing market anywhere in North America that ever had a single year sales, 50% of the buyers were first time buyers. It is impossible. There, there's not enough capital. You'd have, a, have to have such staggering mass uh, immigration move in and such staggering death rate of people who own homes that 50, that half of them died and are moved away. Um, that's simply impossible. But that was believed. We'll have more right after the break with Russ K. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross K. Ross, what's going on with the Vancouver market, and do you have any numbers for the Fraser Valley and the Okanagan? Okay, so what's happening for the BC real estate market, we'll start with Vancouver. I know I always talk about Vancouver. I don't talk about the Okanagan and uh, Fraser Valley. Fraser Valley is included in the Vancouver when you look at the, the greater Vancouver area. So those two markets, um, when you take it holistically as one, then you understand what's going on in uh, British Columbia in the greater Vancouver area. In Ontario, with the greater Toronto area, people always take it as one. It's only in Vancouver with your crazy benchmark prices, your crazy real estate boards uh, giving advice to everybody that you have the problem that you have. So here's an example of the problem that you have. And what happens when all of a sudden first time buyers, yeah, they start to eat up a large share of the houses that are being sold and those ultra luxury class homes are no longer being sold. Here's the story. In the greater Vancouver, the, the sales stats posted by the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver, which went unreported anywhere in Canada last week. It was a, not a reported news no, a number in one newscast. The average selling price in Vancouver dropped 19.2% to 
year over year in January. As your listeners know, they can go back and listen to our report starting back in September. We told you that in January, you were going to have a 19% average selling price decrease. What we had told you was going to happen, because it had already happened back then, would, would be recorded in January. It got recorded in January exactly as we said in the, your show over and over again. Housing markets are unavoidable. It's a train going down the tracks. It cannot turn. What you see ahead is what you're going to get. It's not like the stock market where the market can change overnight because Trump gets elected or there's a, there's a, um, accident in Japan. Uh, that doesn't happen in a real estate market. A real estate market takes months and months to change. You've got to read those changes months and months in advance if you know, want to know where that train is headed. We told you in September the train was headed for a 19%, 19 to 20% drop in January of 2017. Right, I think we, I believe we used to say, right when they're starting to get ready to start uh, going to campaigning for your next uh, government. Um, that number now has been true. So there, it, it's, it's, there's no discussion. Um, it's, we don't think this is any great thing that we can forecast that far ahead. Um, but we are the only people in Canada that can do it. Now, what your listeners would have heard was, oh, maybe the housing prices in Vancouver had dropped 3.7% in the last six months. What? They, a real estate board talking about six months instead of a year? Why would they do that? They do that because they've been caught in Vancouver. As we've told you before, they've been, cro they've been caught across British Columbia using that phony, um, ridiculous, and dangerous benchmark price. So here's the real story. On January, when they reported last week, the benchmark price for all housing types combined was up. 15.6% for January. The one-year increase they're claiming was a 15.6% increase. But shh, shh, we won't tell anybody about that this time. We're going to talk about the six months price, and then maybe we can have another six, seven, eight months to fudge the numbers to get them back in line again, and maybe nobody will catch us. And if Ross K. Realty Consultants wasn't out there working on behalf of the wealthy homeowner members, maybe that would be true. Maybe they would have got, gotten away with it, as other real estate boards have for the last four decades. But that isn't the case anymore. They claimed on their own reports, you can go right to their website right now, they had a 15.6% gain. When, in the exact same month, the average selling price was down 19.2. And on January the 15th, when the Canadian Real Estate Association releases the average selling price for the greater Vancouver area, then you will see that 19.2% 19 .2 first being in print anywhere in Canada, except nobody will talk about it. Because at that time, the Canadian Real Estate Association has been told by the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver to keep their mouth shut. Don't you do anything that will discredit us. If you tell them anything different, drawing the attention to that 19% decrease, we will stop giving you our real estate data for Vancouver. Those threats have gone on for decades in organized real estate. Those threats are part of the problem because they control the information that gets out to the public. The Quebec Real Estate Association, Centris, has used that tactic to such a great degree that actually every Every realtor across Canada who does not work in the province of Quebec gives the agents in Quebec about a $65 a year credit for advertising. So in other words, the Quebec Real Estate Board says, if you want to have our data, Korea, to be able to give it to the uh, CMHC, the Minister of Finance, StatsCan, Haver Analytics, all of these companies you sell this data to or give it to to imply for your lobbying efforts for your members, um, you've got to give us something or we'll leave the Canadian Real Estate Association. Well, every English speaking member in a not in outside of Quebec pays the Quebec members about between $50 and $65 a year as an advertising credit. 
That's how bad this is. Long story short, the benchmark price for Greater Vancouver increased 15.6% in January, year over year. The average selling price dropped 19.2% year over year in January. British Columbians are going out and making the single largest investment of their lifetime. They will be encumbered by mortgage debt for a minimum 25 years. They are going to have everything in their life financially impacted by the decision of what home to buy, whether or not to buy a home, timing the real estate market, whatever the case is. They are being at the same month that the average selling price is off by 20%, 19.2%. They're being told that housing prices are up 15.6%. This, this is how, in the summer, you heard all those 30 40% increases. It's the exact same nonsense. The consum I trust that consumers, home buyers, homeowners, will make rational decisions if they're given the rational, truthful numbers. I think if they know, they're told that their house is going to go up 4% over the next five years on average, they will make a rational decision that's in the best interest of their family of whether or not they should buy a home for, from a realtor, so the realtor can make commission, or they'll decide to rent one, meaning the realtor will earn no commission. I think the consumer is intelligent enough to make that decision on their own. I think they certainly want to know that outside of British Columbia, in every other province, across North America, actually in most countries of the world, where all housing bubbles are measured, they're measured with the average selling price. Which your Vancouver housing, your uh, British Columbia housing bubble right now, in hindsight, will be measured solely on the change to the average selling price. Those are down 19.2%, just as we forecasted back in September when those changes had already taken place. Right now, you're at 27%. So it's not just 19.2% right now, you are now at 27%. And those numbers may not even show up until uh, November or January of next year. And by the way, the market can't turn around and eradicate that. The market can't turn around. What I mean by that is, there were, um, this January, 825 condos uh, sold in the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver. I keep using this. The, the things that I say in Vancouver for the people in the Okanagan, the people in Fraser Valley, the, the people in Victoria, anywhere in British Columbia, a housing market is provincial. Whatever is happening in Vancouver, sooner or later is going to happen in your backyard. You cannot avoid it. Do not listen to any real estate agent or analysis, or, or CMHC economist who says that real estate is local. Real estate is provincial, always has been, always will be in Canada. What is happening in Vancouver will happen in your neighborhood to, to, with a varying degree. In the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver, 825 of their sales this month, I think they had about uh, 1,400 in total, they had 1,000, and uh, no, they didn't. They had uh, 2,000, 2,400 sales, 2,400 sales, 2,400 sales, okay? Um, that was last year, though, Ross. No, you are right, Ross. Yeah, they had about 14, 1,400 sales uh, this month. 825 of those were apartment buildings. That's why your average selling price only increased, 19, dropped 19.2% because your first-time buyers are being convinced to enter the market at this time. First-time buyers are being convinced by realtors to go out and buy their first home. At the same time, your housing market is collapsing. Now remember, in Toronto, where they had, they said there was 50% of the sales were going to first-time buyers, 50%. Those housing prices went up. Average selling price increased 17%. Here we have in Vancouver, where 800 of 1,400 sales were apartments, meaning when you, some of those sales were uh, apartment to apartment moves. In other words, they're moving from a cheaper apartment they own to a more expensive, a higher quality apartment. Um, 
there is a marketplace where you might have been around 42% first-time buyers this January. With that market, you had a 20% house price drop. In that market, you had a 19, 20% drop in price that is already reading forward at a 27% decrease. You can't have one number released by a real estate board statistic in Greater Toronto using the same type of ex explanation to justify a 17% house price gain and the same story now happening in Vancouver where housing prices, the average selling prices drop 19%. It makes no logical sense. But CMHC retweeted the report. CMHC used the report. What I'd like to say this to everybody, all your listeners today. The average selling price has dropped 19.2% in Greater Vancouver in the month of January. Okay, it's dropped 19.2%. Your sales have collapsed. Has CMHC moved the red warning they issued for Greater Vancouver back into green? Because with a, certainly, they're not going to go say now, after that market is already corrected by 20%, that, that it's still a red warning. Because the last red, when they first issued the red warning, prices were only increasing at 13%. So now they're going to leave a red warning when prices have already dropped 20%. There is a major, major, major problem for anybody who owns a home listening to CMHC and realtors. You are getting a bunch of nonsense that this month reached a historical proportion. You need a factual representation of the housing market so that you and your family can make the right decision that's going to be registered against your family for the next 20, 25 years. And you are not getting it from what you're hearing in the news today. Ross, if you can quickly answer some of the questions my executive producer has for you. Sure. China's stiffer capital controls, could that crash the Vancouver market or Toronto? Uh, it, well, we know it already. We know that uh, from our stories here uh, with you earlier in the year, Jim, where uh, we referenced uh, our intelligence that we get on that uh, marketplace. That was the cause for Vancouver's market collapse. But that collapse ha started back in March and April of last year. Um, no, it's not going to intensify it. You have already undergone the most single most historic drop in average selling price in the history of North American real estate. We have already, we're already calculating. You're already up at 27% off. Um, this is, this is not pretty. This, this, this has nothing to do with the, um, Chinese bot, the, the, the latest round of uh, tightening, uh, of keeping money in China. This is all a result of the stuff we talked about, uh, almost a year ago on your show. Has $50 oil changed the Calgary and Edmonton real estate markets? You know, it's again. That's another misrepresent. That 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 market has been so misrepresented over the last 15 years. I, I you know, I, I really can't exp express to people the um, housing prices there are off by about 24 percent. If you listen to organized real estate, they're going to tell you they're down by about four to four to five. What they don't measure is um, how much house you're getting for your dollar. So, you know, again, I, I know I repeat this over and over in your show. The quality score. The quality of the home that you're buying is of utmost importance. $50 oil, if, if employment, um, jacks back up in, uh, in Alberta and, uh, all of a sudden people have the belief that it's going to go on and on forever as most boom and bust economies do, um, then you could have a surge in housing prices. The reason for that would be is the new home boat builders have pulled back already in Alberta. So their forward-leaning housing stock uh, would take a while to adjust. Realtors capitalize on that with the use of the metrics they release to the public as statistics um, to, to suggest that there's not it's a supply and dem demand function. Um, it's uh, they know darn well that the builders can't get uh, their uh, foundations in the ground quick enough 
if that was to ever happen. All that being said, um, you know, prices have to turn around so radically in, in Calgary uh, and uh, Alberta right now to get them out of this funk. They've got a bit of a boost because of the massive rebuilding that's taking place uh, from the, uh, the tragedy that happened uh, in the northern part of the province there. Um, you're going to see some, the, see, w w when you burn, this, this sounds terrible. And, and I apologize for anybody who, who had to go through this. So, so please understand, I apologize for what I'm about to say. When you burn down a town and it gets rebuilt, it is a brand new town. The quality of the housing stock that is, is, replaces those former homes is all brand new. It's also funded with insurance money. So because it's re funded with insurance money, if it's at replacement value, the quality goes up even more. People also have an ability when those rebuilds are happening to upgrade the houses. In other words, if it had um, um, Formica countertops, now they may pay a small price to upgrade to granite because the builders, it makes no difference to the builder. He, he doesn't need to gain, take his extra profit margin off it. His workers are still going to do the same work. Um, he wants the insurance contract. That's what he's after. So when something like that happens, the housing stock is, is, is flips overnight. You know, by the time that gets done, you know, three, three and a half years out probably by the time it's all, all the mess has been cleaned up, you're, you're basically talking about a brand new city. So the housing prices will go up. They will carry the rest of the province up with them because the realtors will use those numbers and they won't explain to the public that those, that our numbers are skewed because we have all these brand new houses that were built and we're not counting houses that were 40 and 50 years old anymore. So it's just cyclical how it works, but uh, that is going to be a way bigger impact than any $50 oil. When does the spring market start, and will we see higher inventories in Vancouver? Okay, so this is another myth. Uh, the real estate cycle ends, um, started in uh, November, so, so your, your, your trading year started in November. So your first time buyers, that's the reason you see 825 of the 1400 sales in Greater Vancouver going to apartments. Because the, the lower priced homes sell at the early part of the year. Then the people who are in the more expensive homes begin to list their homes because they're getting pressure from the real estate agents to put it on the market because all of these uh, move up buyers are waiting to buy. And that's normally how a real estate market works. And then in the next third of the year, you're going to see the highest prices recorded for the year always get recorded in that section. It's got nothing to do with housing prices going up. It's just that that's the trade-up buyers, your, your sales mix changes over the course of a trading year. Um, nobody measures that other than us. And, and I mean, there is, we have 13 million transactions where, that we reviewed where this is, this is not even debatable. This is one of the reasons that train is on the track and it can't move. Um, so, yes, what you'll see is more listings come on the market. When listings come in the market, now your listeners should understand if they're thinking about buying a home, A, I'm telling you not to buy yet. You're foolish to buy right now because the housing market has not started to increase with price. But there'll be people who don't listen and they're going to go out and do it anyways. You know, waste hundreds, maybe you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the process. Um, listen to real estate agents. But if that's what they want to do, so be it. So what I'll tell you is is that what you'll do in the spring, say in uh, April, May, June, you'll get a higher quality of home for the same home buying dollar. What I mean by that is is that people with the better homes in a slow market are the only people who can sell. Nobody else can sell. The only, if you're not living in the, right now in, in Vancouver, if there's 100 houses on the street and you're not living in the best 14, you cannot sell your house. The only way you can sell it is by dropping your price till it's so low that a buyer says, hey, I'll buy that cheaper one and I'll do the work on it myself, which, you know, has not gone on BC for, has not happened in BC now for about uh, 18 months. Those old days are back already. So what you'll see is, yes, you'll see listing inventory rise in the spring. 
Uh, but that really is not a good metric. Like you can't measure the market from that because houses are being pulled off the market as quickly as new ones are coming on. What the difference is is you will the ones that are being added in, generally speaking, will be of a higher quality than the ones are, that are being taken off the market because they didn't sell. Is the Toronto market just going to lag behind Vancouver and we'll see the same picture in Toronto a year from now, the same as we're seeing in Vancouver right now? Yeah, well, well, Vancouver's, you mean, that was the greatest drop. you got to remember, they went up the most on a dollar. See, everybody talks about real estate in terms of percentage. We don't. We look at it in dollars and cents. When you look at it in dollars and cents, you understand the magnitude of what we're talking about here. Like, that's how we, this, you know, our one point, our $190 billion loss of net worth in British Columbia because of uh, falling house prices that's already been recorded. Um, the dollars and cents perspective um, means that a 10% drop in, in the greater Toronto area is not the same as a 10% drop in Vancouver. So, um, you will not see the same percentages being announced uh, when when the GTA market starts to correct uh, as you did in Vancouver. And what's probably also di different about the GTA is that the period of stagnation that will will be required to get rid of this um, bulb housing bubble uh, will probably be substantially longer than it's going to be in Vancouver because with Vancouver's case. Um, you're just you're just shedding price, you know, by the month. We're, I mean, we're off, like I said, 19 percent, basically, and from what we recorded back in September. So, what are we five months? Uh, you've already dropped 20 percent. It's uh, it's a staggering number when you consider that your average selling price, you know, it was a was at a million dollars. Uh, a 20 percent drop is two hundred thousand dollars. It's staggering. So, the GTA market will deflate differently then the Vancouver market or the British Columbia market uh, is going to deflate. Um, my only question is, is we're not 100% sure if this will be the month that uh, Canada goes negative or next month is the month that Canada goes negative. Vancouver, between January and February, the, your market collapse, again, because your market is going to be collapsed just the same and even more next month, um, it is of such a great magnitude it probably Ontario probably cannot keep up with it. Um, the few extra sales that are taking place in Ontario probably are not going to make up for the huge drop in uh, that's taking place in uh, British Columbia. Ross, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks a lot, Jim. My guest has been real estate consultant Ross K from the Wealthy Homeowner .ca. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.